together the crowd numbered about 120 persons, and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit, through David, foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us, and was allotted his share in his ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Let us read together Psalm 1 beginning and ending with the refrain. Happy are those who delight in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on this law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything that they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Our second reading is from the book of John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our sequence hymn.
holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus prayed for his disciples, saying, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. my mouth be pleasing unto you, O Lord. Lord. I was told last time I preached that I looked more comfortable preaching down here. I did it just so I didn't look like an angel up there. So, um, Forgive me if I lose my place, but I am a reader because I'm afraid I'll come out of my mouth something that I shouldn't say in church. <laughs> Our reading from Acts of the Apostles today gives us an interesting glimpse into the lives of the earliest Christians. Some history about the Acts of the Apostles. Its author, identified as, by tradition as Luke, had already produced his gospel. The account of the Acts of the Apostles was intended to help Christians of his day to gain an unshakable confidence in their future, repeating things from their past. The plot line of Acts begins with the ascension of Jesus and the death and dynamic growth of the primitive com community in Jerusalem, energized by the Spirit and led by Peter and the Apostles, up through the martyrdom of Stephen. Stephen was considered the first deacon of the new church. It was during this time, between the ascension of Jesus and the coming of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, that Peter felt compelled to fill the void left by the defection of Judas Iscariot, the one who had betrayed the Lord. Twelve is an important number in the Gospel, in the Bible, excuse me, because of the twelve tribes of Israel. So it must have seemed important to Peter that there be twelve apostles to carry on the ministry, to be witnesses to Christ in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, 
and to the ends of the earth. The one to be chosen must have been from the beginning a witness to all that Jesus said and did in his earthly ministry. Two persons were proposed. One was Joseph, and a name I can't say, and also known as Justice, and the other was Matthias. They prayed that the Lord would show them which of these two should take his place among the twelve. They cast lots, and Matthias was chosen. I, and Father Carl, and all modern clergy can attest to you that is not how clergy are chosen in the modern world. It is a matter of casting lots. It is not a matter of casting lots, but lots and lots of study, testing, and interviews. In our second reading today from John, he tells us that God gives us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. What is eternal life? It is mentioned in various readings in the Bible more than ten times. Like most people, people of our modern world, when in doubt, Google the question. And here are a few comments. The gift of eternal life comes to those who believe in Jesus Christ, who is himself the resurrection and the life. When eternal life is referred to as something we will possess in the future, it is a reference to eternal life, not simply life that never ends, but a fullness of life that is unending. In fact, in many ways, eternal life really has nothing to do with time, as it can be experienced apart from time as well as within time. The Bible tells us that everyone will exist eternally, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Believing in Jesus Christ with all our hearts, minds, and souls will bring us eternal life. This has been told to us over and over, and yet do we believe that we will have that life? Yes. For when we gather together for Holy Eucharist, we catch a glimpse of the heavenly life that Jesus promises us. The Eucharist is that sacrament whereby we get a foretaste of that heavenly banquet, when all things will be made right, when all hurts will be mended, when all tears will be wiped away, when all divisions will be repaired, when God will be in all of us. It is the Eucharist that links us to today, to the incarnate Word, the reconciliation with the Father that Christ won for us and the pledge of eternal life. The Eucharist, as St. Ignatius of Antioch said, is the medicine of immortality and the antidote against death, enabling us to live forever in Jesus Christ. As we continue in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, may we call these things to mind, for Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. This is the bread that came down from heaven. The one who eats this bread will live forever. The gospel today is actually a prayer for Jesus' disciples. <clears throat> Jesus is our high priest and intercessor. He makes God's will known to us and our heartfelt needs known to God. Jesus Jesus' words and deeds reveal God's mercy, justice, glory, truth, and his desire to establish a personal relationship with each of us. Jesus prayed this prayer for his twelve disciples as they faced his imminent death. Yet this prayer is for all of us. We need to do the work that Jesus seeks us to do, to tell the world about him and his Father. Especially today, we are in need of the world understanding that it is through God and Jesus that our troubles will cease. That we need to believe that we will have eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that we all be together in that heavenly kingdom where there is no pain or trouble. Let us pray that we all hold fast to our beliefs so that we can share in the eternal life that has been told to us by Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Please stand. Let us say together the Nicene Creed as we reaffirm our commitment to Jesus Christ. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God for God, life for life, true God for true God, begotten God. of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and always seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kevin, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. And for all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray today for those who have died, especially Michael Merrill, Dorothy Zagby, Edna Esham, Keith Heacock, Cook, excuse me, God knows. Um, and for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Together, and have mercy upon us, Lord, Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. And none and none. Things done, but none and so hold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in the place of life. To the honor and glory of the name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand. Keep your social distance. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I'm sure everyone here is confused right now as to what's happening with the uh, restrictions in Delaware 
and in the diocese. Uh, CDC has come out with some guidance in reference to the removal of masks, social distancing. Uh, we don't know what Governor Carney is going to ultimately come through this week with. Uh, I believe we're supposed to have a clergy focus uh, this week, and we will hear from Bishop Brown what the restrictions will or will not be here within the diocese. Um, things are supposed to change already going forward for next Sunday because they were supposed to go into place on the 21st of May. So as of the 21st of May, what we have already is that we go back to three foot social distancing and we can open up to uh, full capacity. If that guideline stays in place, we can increase from 34 to 35 up upwards of 50 people. And you'll see the pews, we've already begun to to mark them off a little bit different. So that may change between now and next Sunday. So you'll find out when you get here. <laughs> Just come on down and we'll have, we'll have a, a, a rip-roaring time uh, as we praise uh, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I know it's confusing when you go into stores. Do you wear a mask? Do you not wear a mask? Do you, who knows? But again, they'll figure it out and we'll get some guidance because we are uh, guided by the bishop's office. So whatever guidance we are given, we will follow. Um, after service, if you have a few minutes and would like to stop by the parish hall for a cup of coffee, please feel free to do so. Um, we've opened up, we've changed some things in the parish hall around. So please join us in the parish hall after service uh, for some refreshments, uh, prepackaged, and also for a time of uh, social distance fellowship. Um, are there any other announcements? Wow. This congregation is usually not this quiet. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our Offertory hymn.
service continues on page 7 of the booklet or on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament to serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but 
deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us.
Post communion prayer is found on the bottom of page 8 in your service booklet or on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singing of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. The love of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Our commissioning him is found on the top of page 9.
I'll bet you wish. Oops, you finish? I'll bet you wish.